Welcome to In a Prosecco, the podcast that raises a glass to moms who are transitioning from empty nester into the next beautiful phase of life as a free bird. I'm your host, Bernie Slowey. I'm a mother of two sons who have grown and flown, and I'm also a former corporate executive, filmmaker, writer, speaker, and entrepreneur who has helped women transfer into their authentic selves to uncork their infinite sparkling possibilities. So whether you're sipping a Prosecco or your favorite beverage of choice, join me as we pop open today's message in a bottle. Hello friends. Thanks for joining me today on In a Prosecco. So I was just so excited about the Prosecco that I went ahead and started. <laughs> and I don't have a bottle to pop. But the Truth Serum still will share today what's topic. There you go with the effervescence. That is very personal. And I've not talked about this in depth um, publicly before. But it was actually because a friend had asked me as far as like the ideas of coming up with different topics for inner Prosecco. And that when we talk about the empty nest syndrome, that um, various subjects have been suggested. And so I'm really excited. So thank you for those who are offering recommendations, commenting on things that they would like to hear about. And someone actually had said that the thought that they had was that their sense of loss actually came from an experience with miscarriage and for those of you who've ever had to experience miscarriage i can already tell that the feels are coming i think once we experience that kind of loss we truly embrace the miracle of life and really celebrating in my case that the miscarriages occurred after my two sons were born so that my experience with um the the loss actually occurred three in a row so this happened in 2008 where my sons had already uh they would be eight and um probably six and a half so my husband joe and i had talked about trying for number three because we thought maybe we could have a little girl and i never if you listen to some previous episodes where i talk about like okay i wasn't prepared to be a parent to this i had been a apparent to my my siblings because of being the oldest I was the babysitter and often joked about always having my tubes tied because I'd already been a parent and I was good and I didn't want to mess up other people's lives like and especially with my own children right so it's like I'm good I don't I, I can just have pets <laughs> so we were blessed with two amazing beautiful sons that have grown into wonderful human beings but in 2008 i had become pregnant and very excited about the prospect of okay is number three right number could be a little girl and i'd worked in a very toxic work environment this was right around the time of the the financial crisis of lehman brothers and the collapse of really the structure of the home mortgages and so the work environment was already really toxic and i'd actually had a new boss a new president had been named um, the bank where i worked and really things had just become entirely stressful and i remember i hadn't announced yet that i was pregnant but when i had there was this element of well you know i'm i'm a new mother and a lot of the executives and that uh, were my peers they were older and and male and so there wasn't an understanding probably as much about um trying to start with a 
young children um, having another baby. And so for me, I really wanted to be able to manage and, and balance because I, as I said, I, I always felt that being in, the, in my career versus a mom, I felt more comfortable in the boardroom than the nursery room. And so thankfully, my husband was always reliable about picking up our kids at the daycare on time. <laughs> I was not, I was always probably one of the last parents to come pick up the kids and, you know, always pushing that time limit. And especially because of the commute, I had a 30 minute commute from work to the daycare. So I'm thinking, you know, trying to have a third, how is this going to go? But the 10 week appointment i had a or around 10 weeks i had a really stressful experience at work and i ended up in the emergency room actually because i was having a panic attack and the er um, doctor had done i had told them that i was pregnant and so i wasn't comfortable with doing a, a cat scan or an mri for the radiation exposure that would be, you know, um, a concern for my baby. And they said, you know, well, we need to be more concerned about your health right now. So doing all the vitals and I did do the CAT scan, but the thing is they, they also were able to do the ultrasound and, and an interesting comment from the doctor who'd asked how long I was actually along in, in the pregnancy. And I said at the time it was about 10 weeks. And she had shown a little bit of concern, but didn't say very much. And I said, I'm, I'm approaching my you know, appointment to go in and actually do my first ultrasound. So we go into the ultrasound with my husband um, to, for that appointment. And I had shared with the doctor that I had been pretty stressed. We went to do the ultrasound. And what the doctor had shared, I was not prepared for. We'd been blessed with two healthy babies. I loved my pregnancy. I felt so healthy and, and vibrant carrying these two lives in my belly. And so when the doctor said there was no heartbeat found in the ultrasound, that I would have to either wait for a natural miscarriage to occur or that I would have to perform a DNC. I'd opted for the DNC and had to wait several days before the procedure. And in my mind, I wondered how was it possible to have a miscarriage after I'd had such healthy pregnancies and where I just felt so good throughout the pregnancy. So the morning that I went in for the DNC procedure, all I remember is that I had been put under general anesthesia and waking up, I had already started crying as though my soul was already crying at the loss. It didn't stop me, though, from trying again. <laughs> it wasn't that much longer after the DNC procedure, but waking up from that I felt such sadness and such grief just because I hadn't met this little soul. The pain of the loss was unbearable. I was really... concerned about 
how to, you know, how I would go back to work uh, and, and have people understand. I had to take 30 days off of work for personal time off. And, you know, I had a lot of processing that I did in those 30 days. <clears throat> One was like, I want to try again as soon as possible. And the other, you know, was kind of like, man, I really beat myself up. I thought, could I have done things differently? Could I have eaten better? You know, was it uh, that something that I did was I just working out too hard or, you know, just staying at work so late that I wasn't getting enough rest. And I really blamed myself so much that I wanted to make up for it. You know, I'm going to do better the next time. So <clears throat> my husband, Joe, and I tried again and fortunately got pregnant again. My, my DNC would have been in August and I had learned that I was pregnant again already in late September, the following month. So I already gone through a cycle, got pregnant again right away. So I'm delighted. But around 10, 11 weeks before that, you know, the first appointment for your ultrasound, right? Just before the 12 weeks, I started bleeding and went in and sure enough, there was unfortunate news that I'd already had a miscarriage. And so, of course, the emotions run over me again about what did I do this time? I could, what could I have done differently? And I, when it is that close back to back, of course, I'm thinking like, ugh, you know, this, I felt like such a failure. You know, my life was all about achieving. And especially when it came to my career and how to be able to juggle everything. And I know that those of you who've ever experienced this, that it seems like it's a very quiet um, morning of sorts because I wanted to be able to, you know, recognize and acknowledge that I already have two amazing souls. But then I couldn't help wonder, like, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? And it really messed up my self-esteem. But I'd put on a strong face and would go back to work. So that, you know, wanted to try again. And lo and behold, I find out in December of 2018, or I'm sorry, 2008, that I'm pregnant again. And so I'm like, okay, this time, this is it. This is absolutely it. I'm going to make sure that I'm trying to not be stressed about his work so much or not uh, stay so late or, you know, I'm making sure that I'm eating the right things and living healthy as much as possible. But getting through the holidays, and I'm so excited about like, this is a Christmas present. And, and maybe this is it. Third time's a charm. So then when I go into the appointment with the doctor for the first ultrasound and find out that there's no heartbeat, I'm heartbroken all over again. It's never easy. It's certainly not when I'm able to get pregnant, right? Because that wasn't the issue. It was staying pregnant. And I understand at the time, I was 35. And that's always a, I guess, you know, that's where you start to really be concerned about um, healthy pregnancies. You get special tests and um, to make sure that they're 
Um, is it an issue with an extra chromosome? You know, all the additional testing that happens as we get older. And again, though, I just couldn't help but beat myself up as far as what did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? The thing I will tell you that after the third miscarriage, I didn't want to try this again. I felt like I was done. I don't think that I could have had another broken heart over a loss of a pregnancy. The blessing that happened with that third miscarriage was like a wake-up call from the universe, a higher power, whatever you believe in. But the third time is a charm with that pregnancy. It was more of an awareness that the environment that I was in was not healthy and it was time for a change. So when I talked with my husband about how toxic the work environment was, that I... I needed to make a change so that it's what prompted me to submit my resignation because the culture wasn't going to change. My boss wasn't going to change. (laughs) That is a different episode, but rather I needed to make the change for myself. I needed to make the change for my relationship with my husband. I needed to make a change for my family, with my kids. And really the blessing in it was that I did leave. It was a good solid 20 year career, but it was time for a change. And the time that I spent away was really the opportunity for me to get closer and and really embracing my role, my hat of being a mom and I was awkward about it initially because again making that transition from this corporate career woman to being a mother and full-time and realizing that that was the most important role that I would ever play that it would be the most important aspect of my life. It wasn't the title. It wasn't the amount that I was earning. It wasn't the external validation. It wasn't my identity wrapped around all that. It was the the investment in my children to be able to have more time with them and to want the very best for them. And that was the gift that they have given me is to be a mom. It's the role I will cherish forever. So shortly after I left the bank and it wasn't that much longer that I said, I want to have my little girl. So <laughs> we talked about getting another dog. And we were just going to go and look <laughs> at this group of French bulldogs that uh, were available. And I knew that I wanted a little girl. And my oldest son, Nick, helped me pick out um, a little dog that we named Chloe, Chloe (laughs) Slowy. And we definitely had a bond. And that was the, not a replacement by any means. It just helped fill a little bit of a void. So I was so happy to have her. And as I record this now, when we moved to Florida, we had to put her down. But as a result of that time 
that I was able to have the blessing that I had with my kids. Yeah, I think that after my third miscarriage, it was about a year later when I had an appointment with the gynecologist and I learned that I had a cyst on my left ovary. So I hadn't been able to actually, it made a lot of sense why my first pregnancy took so long to actually get pregnant was that I was really only producing eggs in one um, fallopian tube. And so, or one of my ovaries, I was only producing um, eggs in one ovary. And so I realized that my two children were truly miracles because the fact that the odds even were more reduced and the fact that I was able to get pregnant at all, even with the marriage, the miscarriages, that there was uh, something about those miscarriages that were really guiding me to ch make a change in my life. It really was the wake-up call that I needed to know that there was more to life than to be in a situation that was so stressful and that was not healthy. And I've thought about it many times as far as what was the meaning of it all. And I know I'm still emotional about it because I think as mothers who have ever experienced miscarriage, that you always wonder about like, you know, I keep tracking the number of years, like what, how old would my baby be today? What would we be doing today? What would the dynamics be today? And at the same time, if I were to keep in that place, I'd be looking at the loss versus the wonderful gain that I had and the healthy children, the two that I have. So I wanted to make the most out of life for them and to be the best mom that I could possibly be. And so I know that a little bit of that, the experience with the miscarriages made it that much harder for me when I became an empty nester. But I'm also so proud of who the sons that I have and who they become and that I got the time to be with them. And I had my projects, I had the businesses that I would start to know that the relationship that I have with them today is what means so much to me. And that is a family that when we get together, I know I'm, I'm looking at two miracles in my life and that's what I cherish. And nothing will take that away. And I want to believe that the souls that maybe I didn't get to have and bring in this lifetime, maybe they're still around and watching after over and over us and, and little Chloe, <laughs> that she's still with us. So I share this experience of the miscarriages because it's very healing, actually. It's very cathartic for me to share this. Um, I know it's uh, an emotional experience for so many of you who understand. So I, I apologize that there's a lot of to hear still, but also that I'm I'm celebrating the strength and the perseverance of that life goes on. And if anything, it's knowing that there was a redirection. And I've told my, my sons this too, that to see that rejection is God's protection for redirection. And that's exactly what those miscarriages were for me. It was a time of necessary change and life became better for it, that it was meant to be. And I acknowledge the souls that could have been, but I'm absolutely embracing the wonderful souls that are my sons that are in my life today. So if there's a little bit of help there to know that 
you know, we were at the sisterhood of loss, but also that there is the light at the end of the tunnel, that it's embracing the miracles that occur every day. So every child that's born, I have a lot of surrogate daughters. <laughs> um, I love having the nieces and, and my nephews and extended family. So with that, I hope that uh, it helps you provide some, maybe some, a different perspective for your healing journey. And until next time, thanks for joining me today. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode of In a Prosecco, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Rate and review the show, and please do comment and share ideas for topics that are important to you. A friend who cares is a friend who shares. Here's a toast to you on your re-inspirement journey. Cheers. <laughs>